Canadian National (CN), French Canadian National, is a Canadian Class I freight railway headquartered in Montreal, Quebec, that serves Canada and the Midwestern and Southern United States. CN is Canada's largest railway, in terms of both revenue and the physical size of its rail network, and is Canada's only transcontinental railway company, spanning Canada from the Atlantic coast in Nova Scotia to the Pacific coast in British Columbia across about 20,400 route miles kilometers of track. CN is a public company with 24,000 employees and as of September 2018 it had a market cap of approximately $84 billion Canadian dollars. CN was government-owned, having been a Canadian Crown Corporation from its founding to its privatization in 1995. In 2011, Bill Gates was the largest single shareholder of CN stock. The railway was referred to as the Canadian National Railways (CNR) between 1918 and 1960, and as Canadian National (Canadian National CN) from 1960 to the present. History The Canadian National Railways CNR was incorporated on June 6, 1919, comprising several railways that had become bankrupt and fallen into federal government hands, along with some railways already owned by the government. On November 17, 1995, the federal government privatized CN. Over the next decade, the company expanded significantly into the United States, purchasing Illinois Central Railroad and Wisconsin Central Transportation, among others. Now primarily a freight railway, CN also operated passenger services until 1978, when they were assumed by Via Rail. The only passenger services run by CN after 1978 were several mixed trains freight and passenger in Newfoundland, and a several commuter trains both on CN's electrified routes and towards the South Shore in the Montreal area the latter lasted without any public subsidy until 1986. The Newfoundland mixed trains lasted until 1988, while the Montreal commuter trains are now operated by Montreal's AMT. Topic: <laughs> Creation of the company, 1918 to 23. In response to public concerns fearing loss of key transportation links, the Government of Canada assumed majority ownership of the near-bankrupt Canadian Northern Railway CNOR on September 6, 1918, and appointed a «board of management» to oversee the company. At the same time, CNOR was also directed to assume management of Canadian Government Railways CGR, a system comprising the Intercolonial Railway of Canada IRC, National Transcontinental Railway NTR, and the Prince Edward Island Railway PAIR, among others. On December 20, 1918, the federal government created the Canadian National Railways CNR, a title only with no corporate powers, through a Canadian Privy Council order in council as a means to simplify the funding and operation of the various railway companies. The absorption of the Intercolonial Railway would see CNR adopt that system's slogan The People's Railway. Another Canadian railway, the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway GTPR, encountered financial difficulty on March 7, 1919, when its parent company Grand Trunk Railway GTR, defaulted on repayment of construction loans to the federal government. 
the federal government's Department of Railways and Canals took over operation of the GTPR until July 12, 1920, when it too was placed under the CNR. The Canadian National Railway was organized on October 10, 1922. Finally, the bankrupt GTR itself was placed under the care of a federal government board of management. On May 21, 1920, while GTR management and shareholders opposed to nationalization took legal action. After several years of arbitration, the GTR was absorbed into CNR on January 30, 1923. In subsequent years, several smaller independent railways would be added to the CNR as they went bankrupt, or it became politically expedient to do so, however the system was more or less finalized following the addition of the GTR. Canadian National Railways was born out of both wartime and domestic urgency. Railways, until the rise of the personal automobile and creation of taxpayer-funded all-weather highways, were the only viable long-distance land transportation available in Canada for many years. As such, their operation consumed a great deal of public and political attention. Many countries regard railway networks as critical infrastructure even to this day and at the time of the creation of CNR during the continuing threat of the First World War, Canada was not the only country to engage in railway nationalization. In the early 20th century, many governments were taking a more interventionist role in the economy, foreshadowing the influence of economists like John Maynard Keynes. This political trend, combined with broader geopolitical events, made nationalization an appealing choice for Canada. The Winnipeg general strike of 1919 and Allied involvement in the Russian Revolution seemed to validate the continuing process. The need for a viable rail system was paramount in a time of civil unrest and foreign military intervention. CN Telegraph CN Telegraph originated as the Great Northwest Telegraph Company in 1880 to connect Ontario and Manitoba and became a subsidiary of Western Union in 1881. In 1915, facing bankruptcy, GNWTC was acquired by the Canadian Northern Railways Telegraph Company. When Canadian Northern was nationalized in 1918 and amalgamated into Canadian National Railways in 1921, its telegraph arm was renamed the Canadian National Telegraph Company. CN Telegraphs began co-operating with its Canadian Pacific-owned rival CPR Telegraphs in the 1930s, sharing telegraph networks and co-founding a teleprinter system in 1957. In 1967 the two services were amalgamated into a joint venture CNCP Telecommunications which evolved into a telecoms company. CN sold its stake of the company to CP in 1984. Topic. CNR Radio In 1923 CNR's second president, Sir Henry Thornton who succeeded David Blyth Hanna 1919 created the CNR radio department to provide passengers with entertainment radio reception and give the railway a competitive advantage over its rival, CP. This led to the creation of a network of CNR radio stations across the country, North America's first radio network. As anyone in the vicinity of a station could hear its broadcasts the network's audience extended far beyond train passengers to the public at large. 
Claims of unfair competition from CP as well as pressure on the government to create a public broadcasting system similar to the British Broadcasting Corporation led the government of R.B. Bennett who had been a corporate lawyer with Canadian Pacific as a client prior to entering politics to pressure CNR into ending its on-train radio service in 1931 and then withdrawing from the radio business entirely in 1933. CNR's radio assets were sold for $50,000 to a new public broadcaster, the Canadian Radio Broadcasting Commission, which in turn became the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation in 1936. <laughs> CN Hotels Canadian Railways built and operated their own resort hotels, ostensibly to provide rail passengers travelling long distances a place to sleep overnight. These hotels became attractions in and of themselves, a place for a rail passenger to go for a holiday. As each railway company sought to be more attractive than its competitors, they made their hotels more attractive and luxurious. Canadian National Hotels was the CNR's chain of hotels and was a combination of hotels inherited by the CNR when it acquired various railways and structures built by the CNR itself. The chain's principal rival was Canadian Pacific Hotels. Topic: <laughs> Canadian National Steamship Company. Canadian National operated a fleet of passenger and cargo vessels on both the west coast and east coast of Canada which operated under a branch of the company known as Canadian National Steamships, later CN Marine. <laughs> west Coast Swan Hunter and Wigham Richardson of Walsend, England, built Prince George and Prince Rupert for the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway in 1910. In 1930 Camel Laird of Birkenhead, England, built Prince David, Prince Henry and Prince Robert. Prince Henry was sold in 1937. Prince George was destroyed by fire in 1945. Prince David and Prince Robert were requisitioned in 1939 as Royal Canadian Navy armed merchant cruisers, converted into landing ships in 1943, and sold in 1948. In 1948 a second Prince George was built by Yarrows Limited, becoming CN's sole remaining Pacific Coast passenger liner. She was switched from scheduled routes to pleasure cruises, and was the last CN ship that served the West Coast. After a fire in 1975 she was sold in 1976 first to British Columbia Steamship Company and finally Wong Brother Enterprises before finally being sold to Chinese Breakers in 1995 and sank on her way to China in 1996 in Unimac Pass. Topic. Canadian former Northern Pacific ships CN Kenora was built in 1918 for the Canadian Northern Pacific's Patricia Bay to Port Man route. In 1919 the ship became part of Canadian National. Topic. Former Grand Trunk Pacific steamships these ships served the Pacific coast with GTP till Canadian National took possession of them in 1925. Prince Rupert 1910 to 56. Prince George 1910 to 45 caught fire and destroyed in 1945. Prince Albert 
Prince John. Topic: CN built steamships for the West Coast. Ships specially built for CN for the West Coast. After the Second World War steamship service had dropped and by the 1950s the ships were withdrawn. Prince George II stayed in service, but to do cruises on the West Coast. By 1975 Prince George II was retired, ending CN's steamship era on the West Coast. Prince Henry Prince David Prince Robert Prince Charles Prince William Prince George II 1948 to 1975 built and replaced the first Prince George after it caught fire in 1945 Prince George II was the last ship that served the west coast for CN Topic East Coast In 1928–29 Camel Laird built a set of five ships for CN to carry mail, passengers and freight between eastern Canada and the Caribbean via Bermuda. Each ship was named after the wife of an English or British admiral who was noted for his actions in the Caribbean, and who had been knighted or ennobled. They were therefore nicknamed the Lady Liners or Lady Boats. Lady Nelson along with Lady Hawkins and Lady Drake were designed for service to eastern islands of the British West Indies and had larger passenger capacity but lesser cargo capacity than Lady Rodney and Lady Summers who were built for service to western islands. In the Second World War Lady Summers was requisitioned as an ocean boarding vessel, an Italian submarine sank her in 1941. Her four sister ships continued in CN service, but Lady Hawkins and Lady Drake were sunk by German submarines in 1942. Lady Nelson was torpedoed in 1942 but refloated and converted to a hospital ship while Lady Rodney survived the war unscathed. The two surviving Lady boats were sold in 1952 after declining passenger traffic and rising labor costs made them too expensive to run. Topic. Cargo ships In 1928 CN took over most of the fleet of Canadian Government Merchant Marine Limited, giving it a fleet of about 45 cargo ships. When France surrendered to Germany in June 1940 the Canadian government seized CGT's MV Morienne and contracted CN to manage her. Topic. Pros and cons of nationalization Regardless of the political and economic importance of railway transportation in Canada, there were many critics of the Canadian government's policies in maintaining CNR as a crown corporation from its inception in 1918 until its privatization in 1995. Some of the most scathing criticism came from the railway industry itself, namely the commercially successful Canadian Pacific Railway CPR, which argued its taxes should not be used to fund a competitor. As a result of history and geography, the CPR served larger population centers in the southern prairies, while the CNR's merged system served as a de facto government colonization railway to serve remote and underdeveloped regions of western Canada, northern Ontario and Quebec, and the Maritimes. 
CN was also disadvantaged by being formed from a collection of insolvent rail systems that were not intrinsically viable, as they seldom had the shortest route between any major cities or industrial centers. To this day, CN has many division points far from significant industries or traffic sources. The only notable exception is the former Grand Trunk mainline between Montreal and Chicago. The company was also used as an instrument of federal government policy, from the operation of ferries in Atlantic Canada, to assuming the operation of the narrow-gauge Newfoundland Railway following that province's entry into Confederation, and the partnership with CPR in purchasing and operating the Northern Alberta Railways. CNR as a social and economic tool CNR was considered competitive with CPR in several areas, notably in central Canada, prior to the age of the automobile and the dense highway network that grew in Ontario and Quebec. The former GTR's superior track network in the Montreal-Chicago corridor has always been a more direct route with higher capacity than CPR's. CNR was also considered a railway industry leader throughout its time as a crown corporation in terms of research and development into railway safety systems, logistics management, and in terms of its relationship with labor unions. Topic. Deregulation and recapitalization From the creation of CNR in 1918 until its recapitalization in 1978, whenever the company posted a deficit, the federal government would assume those costs in the government budget. The result of various governments using CNR as a vehicle for various social and economic policies was a subsidization running into billions of dollars over successive decades. Following its 1978 recapitalization and changes in management, CN name changed to Canadian National Railway, using the shortened acronym CN in 1960, started to operate much more efficiently, by assuming its own debt, improving accounting practices to allow depreciation of assets and to access financial markets for further capital. Now operating as a for-profit crown corporation, CN reported a profit in 11 of the 15 years from 1978 to 1992, paying $371 million in cash dividends profit to the federal government in this time. Topic cutbacks and refocusing CN's rise to profitability was assisted when the company started to remove itself from non-core freight rail transportation starting in 1977 when subsidiary Air Canada created in 1937 as TransCanada Air Lines became a separate federal crown corporation. That same year saw CN move its ferry operations into a separate crown corporation named CN Marine, followed similarly by the grouping of passenger rail services for marketing purposes under the name via CN. The following year, 1978, the federal government decided to create Via Rail as a separate crown corporation to take over passenger services previously offered by both CN and CPR, including CN's flagship transcontinental train the Supercontinental and its eastern counterpart the Ocean. CN Marine was renamed Marine Atlantic in 1986 to remove any references to its former parent organization. CN also grouped its money losing Newfoundland operations into a separate subsidiary called Terra Transport so federal subsidies for this service would be more visible in company statements. 
CN also divested itself in the late 1970s and throughout the 1980s of several non-rail transportation activities such as trucking subsidiaries, a hotel chain sold to CPR, real estate, and telecommunications companies. The biggest telecommunications property was a company co-owned by CN and CP CNCP Telecommunications that originated from a joint venture involving the railway's respective telegraph services. On its sale in the 1980s, it was successively renamed Unitel United Telecommunications, AT&T Canada, and Allstream as it went through various owners and branding agreements. CN sold Terra Nova Tel to Newfoundland Telephone in 1988. Another telecommunications property wholly owned and built by CN was the CN Tower in Toronto, which still keeps its original name but was divested by the railway company in the mid-1990s. All proceeds from such sales were used to pay down CN's accumulated debt. At the time of their divestitures, all of these subsidiaries required considerable subsidies, which partly explained CN's financial problems prior to recapitalization. CN also was given free reign by the federal government following deregulation of the railway industry in the 1970s, as well as in 1987, when railway companies began to make tough business decisions by removing themselves from operating money-losing branch lines. In CN's case, some of these branch lines were those it had been forced to absorb through federal government policies and outright patronage, while others were from the heady expansion era of rural branch lines in the 1920s and early 1930s and were considered obsolete following the development of local road networks. In the period starting in the late 1970s and throughout the 1980s and early 1990s, thousands of kilometers of railway lines were abandoned, including the complete track networks on Newfoundland CN subsidiary Terra Transport. The former Newfoundland Railway ended railway freight operations and mixed freight passenger trains in 1988. Mainline passenger rail service in Newfoundland ended in 1969, and Prince Edward Island the former pair, as well as numerous branch lines in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, southern Ontario, throughout the Prairie Provinces, in the British Columbia interior, and on Vancouver Island. Virtually every rural area served by CN in some form was affected, creating resentment for the company and the federal government. Many of these now abandoned rights of way were divested by CN and the federal government and have since been converted into recreational trails by local municipalities and provincial governments. CN's U.S. subsidiaries prior to privatization CN's railway network in the late 1980s consisted of the company's Canadian trackage, along with the following U.S. subsidiary lines, Grand Trunk Western Railroad GTW, operating in Michigan, Indiana, and Illinois, Duluth, Winnipeg and Pacific Railway DWP, operating in Minnesota, Central Vermont Railway CV, operating down the Connecticut River Valley from Quebec to Long Island Sound, and a former GT line to Portland, Maine, known informally as the Grand Trunk Eastern, sold to a short line operator in 1989. <laughs> Privatization In 1992, a new management team led by ex-federal government bureaucrats, Paul Tellier and Michael Sabia, started preparing CN for privatization by emphasizing increased productivity. 
This was achieved largely through aggressive cuts to the company's bloated and inefficient management structure, wide-scale layoffs in its workforce and continued abandonment or sale of its branch lines. In 1993 and 1994, the company experimented with a rebranding that saw the names CN, Grand Trunk Western, and Duluth, Winnipeg, and Pacific replaced under a collective CN North America moniker. In this time, CPR and CN entered into negotiations regarding a possible merger of the two companies. This was later rejected by the federal government, whereupon CPR offered to purchase outright all of CN's lines from Ontario to Nova Scotia, while an unidentified U.S. railroad rumored to have been Burlington Northern Railroad would purchase CN's lines in Western Canada. This too was rejected. In 1995, the entire company including its U.S. subsidiaries reverted to using CN exclusively. The CN Commercialization Act was enacted into law on July 13, 1995, and by November 28, 1995, the federal government had completed an initial public offering IPO and transferred all of its shares to private investors. Two key prohibitions in this legislation include, one, that no individual or corporate shareholder may own more than 15% of CN, and two, that the company's headquarters must remain in Montreal, thus maintaining CN as a Canadian corporation. Topic. Contraction and expansion since privatization Following the successful IPO, CN has recorded impressive gains in its stock price, largely through an aggressive network rationalization and purchase of newer more fuel-efficient locomotives. Numerous branch lines were shed in the late 1990s across Canada, resulting in dozens of independent short-line railway companies being established to operate former CN track that had been considered marginal. This network rationalization resulted in a core east-west freight railway stretching from Halifax to Chicago and Toronto to Vancouver and Prince Rupert. The railway also operated trains from Winnipeg to Chicago using trackage rights for part of the route south of Duluth. In addition to the rationalization in Canada, the company also expanded in a strategic north-south direction in the central United States. In 1998, in an era of mergers in the U.S. railway industry, CN bought the Illinois Central Railroad IC, which connected the already existing lines from Vancouver, British Columbia to Halifax, Nova Scotia with a line running from Chicago, Illinois to New Orleans, Louisiana. This single purchase of IC transformed CN's entire corporate focus from being an east-west uniting presence within Canada sometimes to the detriment of logical business models into a north-south NAFTA railway in reference to the North American Free Trade Agreement. CN is now feeding Canadian raw material exports into the U.S. heartland and beyond to Mexico through a strategic alliance with Kansas City Southern Railway KCS. In 1999, CN and BNSF Railway, the second largest rail system in the U.S., announced their intent to merge, forming a new corporate entity North American Railways, headquartered in Montreal to conform to the CN Commercialization Act of 1995. The merger announcement by CN's Paul Tellier and BNSF's Robert Krebs was greeted with skepticism by the U.S. government's Surface Transportation Board (STB) and protested by other major North American rail companies, namely Canadian Pacific Railway (CPR) and Union Pacific Railroad (UP). 
Rail customers also denounced the proposed merger, following the confusion and poor service sustained in southeastern Texas in 1998 following UP's purchase of Southern Pacific Railroad two years earlier. In response to the rail industry, shippers, and political pressure, the STB placed a 15-month moratorium on all rail industry mergers, effectively scuttling CNBNSF plans. Both companies dropped their merger applications and have never refiled. After the STB moratorium expired, CN purchased Wisconsin Central WC in 2001, which allowed the company's rail network to encircle Lake Michigan and Lake Superior, permitting more efficient connections from Chicago to Western Canada. The deal also included Canadian WC subsidiary Algoma Central Railway ACR, giving access to Sault Ste. Marie and Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The purchase of Wisconsin Central also made CN the owner of EWS, the principal freight train operator in the United Kingdom. On May 13, 2003, the provincial government of British Columbia announced the Provincial Crown Corporation, BC Rail BCR, would be sold with the winning bidder receiving BCR's surface operating assets locomotives, cars, and service facilities. The provincial government is retaining ownership of the tracks and right-of-way. On November 25, 2003, it was announced CN's bid of $1 billion CAD would be accepted over those of CPR and several U.S. companies. The transaction was closed effective July 15, 2004. Many opponents, including CPR, accused the government and CN of rigging the bidding process, though this has been denied by the government. Documents relating to the case are under court seal, as they are connected to a parallel marijuana grow op investigation connected with two senior government aides also involved in the sale of BC Rail. Also contested was the economic stimulus package the government gave cities along the BC Rail route. Some saw it as a buy-off to get the municipalities to cooperate with the lease, though the government asserted the package was intended to promote economic development along the corridor. Passenger service along the route had been ended by BC Rail a few years earlier due to ongoing losses resulting from deteriorating service. The cancelled passenger service has subsequently been replaced by a blue plate tourist service, the Rocky Mountaineer, with fares well over double what the BCR coach fares had been. CN also announced in October 2003 an agreement to purchase Great Lakes Transportation GLT, a holding company owned by Blackstone Group for $380 million USD. GLT was the owner of Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad, Duluth, Missabe and Iron Range Railway, and the Pittsburgh and Conneaut Dock Company. The key instigator for the deal was the fact that since the Wisconsin Central purchase, CN was required to use Duluth, Missabe and Iron Range Railway trackage rights for a short 11 miles 18 kilometers gap near Duluth, Minnesota on the route between Chicago and Winnipeg. To purchase this short section, CN was told by GLT it would have to purchase the entire company. Also included in GLT's portfolio were eight Great Lakes vessels for transporting bulk commodities such as coal and iron ore as well as various port facilities. Following Surface Transportation Board approval for the transaction, CN completed the purchase of GLT on May 10, 2004. 
On December 24, 2008, the STB approved CN's purchase for $300 million of the principal lines of the Elgin, Joliet and Eastern Railway Company e &E, reporting Mark EJE from U.S. Steel Corp. originally announced on September 27, 2007. The STB's decision was to become effective on January 23, 2009, with a closure of the transaction shortly thereafter. The EJ&E lines create a bypass around the western side of heavily congested Chicago area rail hub and its conversion to use for mainline freight traffic is expected to alleviate substantial bottlenecks for both regional and intercontinental rail traffic subject to lengthy delays entering and exiting Chicago freight yards. The purchase of the lightly used EJ&E corridor was positioned by CN as a boon not only for its own business but for the efficiency of the entire U.S. rail system. On December 31, 2011, CN completed the merger of Duluth, Missabe and Iron Range Railway Company, Duluth, Winnipeg and Pacific Railway Company, and Wisconsin Central Limited into its Wisconsin Central Limited subsidiary. Topic. CN Today Since the company operates in two countries, CN maintains some corporate distinction by having its U.S. lines incorporated under the Grand Trunk Corporation for legal purposes, however, the entire company in both Canada and the U.S. operates under CN, as can be seen in its locomotive and rail car repainting programs. Since the Illinois Central purchase in 1998 CN has been increasingly focused on running a scheduled freight railroad, railway. This has resulted in improved shipper relations, as well as reduced the need for maintaining pools of surplus locomotives and freight cars. CN has also undertaken a rationalization of its existing track network by removing double track sections in some areas and extending passing sidings in other areas. CN is also a rail industry leader in the employment of radio control RC, for switching locomotives in yards, resulting in reductions to the number of yard workers required. CN has frequently been touted in recent years within North American rail industry circles as being the most improved railroad in terms of productivity and the lowering of its operating ratio, acknowledging the fact the company is becoming increasingly profitable. Due to the rising popularity of ethanol, shuttle trains, and mineral commodities, CN rail service is increasing in popularity. Topic. Projects In April 2012 a plan was announced to build an 800 km 500 miles railway that would run north from Sept Isles, Quebec. The railway would support mining and other resource extraction in the Labrador Trough. In September 2012, CN announced the trial of locomotives fueled by natural gas as a potential alternative to conventional diesel fuel. Two SD40 diesel electric locomotives fueled with 90% natural gas and 10% diesel are in service between Edmonton and Fort McMurray, Alberta. Topic: Controversies. In December 1999 the Ultratrain, a petroleum products unit train linking the Levi's, Quebec, Ultramar oil refinery with a petroleum depot in Montreal, exploded when it collided with a derailed freight train traveling in the opposite direction between St. Madeleine and St. Hilaire Est, south of Montreal, killing the crew of the freight train. The Ultratrain crew's last words were, 
You guys are derailed, we're hitting you. The other train derailed at a broken rail caused by a defective weld that was not fixed in time. Despite being repeatedly reported by train crews, the report by the Transportation Safety Board of Canada called into question CN's quality assurance program for rail welds as well as the lack of detection equipment for defective wheels. In memory of the dead crewmen, two new stations on the line have been named after them, Davis and Terrio. On May 27, 2002, a CN train derailed at 12.30 p.m. north of Vermontville Highway in Potterville, Michigan. The train was hauling a total of 58 cars. 35 of the cars derailed and 11 of them contained hazmat material. Nine were carrying propane and two cars carried sulfuric acid. Two of the propane tankers were leaking and a third was suspected of leaking. Each propane car contains 34,000 gallons of propane gas which is considered an extreme fire and explosive hazard. An evacuation of Potterville was declared. CN along with other agencies worked throughout the week to clean the area. A second CN train derailment in Potterville, Michigan, occurred in May 2006, though no evacuation was necessary. The cause of this derailment was found to be a failed wheel bearing on the 82nd car. About 9.04 a.m. Central Standard Time on February 9, 2003, northbound CN freight train M33371 derailed 22 of its 108 cars in Tamaroa, Illinois. Four of the derailed cars released methanol, and the methanol from two of these four cars fueled a fire. Other derailed cars contained phosphoric acid, hydrochloric acid, formaldehyde, and vinyl chloride. Two cars containing hydrochloric acid, one car containing formaldehyde, and one car containing vinyl chloride released product but were not involved in the fire. About 850 residents were evacuated from the area within a 3-mile radius of the derailment, which included the entire village of Tamaroa. Improper placement of bond wire welds on the head of the rail just outside the joint bars, where untempered martensite associated with the welds led to fatigue and subsequent cracking that, because of increased stresses associated with known soft ballast conditions, rapidly progressed to rail failure. On May 14, 2003, a trestle collapsed under the weight of a freight train near McBride, B.C., killing both crew members. Both men had been disciplined earlier for refusing to take another train on the same bridge, claiming it was unsafe. It was revealed that as far back as 1999, several bridge components had been reported as rotten, yet no repairs had been ordered by management. Eventually, the disciplinary records of both crewmen were amended posthumously. Controversy arose again in Canadian political circles in 2003 following the company's decision to refer solely to its acronym CN and not Canadian National, a move some interpret as being an attempt to distance the company from references to Canada. Canada's Minister of Transport at the time called this policy move obscene. After nationalists noted it could be argued the company is no longer Canadian, being primarily owned by American stockholders. The controversy is somewhat tempered by the fact a majority of large corporations are being increasingly referred to by acronyms. In March 2004 a strike by the Canadian Auto Workers Union showed deep-rooted divisions between organized labor and the company's current management. 
the residents of Wabamoon Lake, in Alberta, staged a blockade of CN tracks in August 2005, when they were unsatisfied with the railway's response to a derailment catastrophe that spilled over 700,000 litres of terry fuel oil and about 80,000 L of carcinogenic pole treatment oil into the lake. Reporters found pre-spill evidence. CN executives admitted CN failed to provide public safety information to prevent public exposure to carcinogenic, toxic chemicals. The tar-like oil and chemicals killed over 500 large migratory birds, animals, fish and other aquatic life. On August 5, 2005 in the Chichemis River derailment, a CN train had nine cars derail on a bridge over the Chichemis River, causing 41,000 liters US gal of caustic soda to spill into the river, killing thousands of fish by caustic burns and asphyxiation. The CBC reported environmental experts say it would take the river 50 years or more to recover from the toxic pollution. CN is facing accusations from local British Columbians over the railway's supposed lack of response to this issue, touted as the worst chemical spill in British Columbia's history. Transport Canada has restricted CN to trains not exceeding 80 car lengths because of the multiple derailments on the former BCR line north from Squamish. This was due to sufficient warnings from the former BC. Rail to Canadian National Railway to avoid trains of over 60 cars. Unfortunately these warnings were ignored by CN who had been running trains well in excess of 80 plus cars on this winding and mountainous section of track. Known for some of the steepest track in North America. A further derailment at Moran, 20 miles 32 kilometers north of Lillooet, on June 30, 2006, has raised more questions about CN safety policies. Two more derailments near Lytton in August 2006 have continued criticism. In the first case, 20 coal cars of a CPR train using a CN bridge derailed, dumping 12 cars of coal into the Thompson River. In the second case half a dozen grain cars spilled on a CN train. Two CN trains collided on August 4, 2007, on the banks of the Fraser River near Prince George, B.C. Several cars carrying gasoline, diesel and lumber burst into flames. Water bombers were used to help put out the fires. Some fuel had seeped into the Fraser River. On December 4, 2007, a CN train derailed near Edmonton in Strathcona County, Alberta, at 3:30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Of the 28 cars derailed, most of them were empty or carrying non-hazardous materials such as lumber or pipes. About 8.36 p.m., Central Daylight Time, on Friday, June 19, 2009, eastbound CN freight train U7069118, traveling at 36 miles per hour, 58 kilometers per hour, derailed at a highway rail grade crossing in Cherry Valley, Illinois near Rockford. The train consisted of two locomotives and 114 cars, 19 of which derailed. All of the derailed cars were tank cars carrying denatured fuel ethanol, a flammable liquid. Thirteen of the derailed tank cars were breached or lost product and caught fire. At the time of the derailment, several motor vehicles were stopped on either side of the grade crossing waiting for the train to pass. As a result of the fire that erupted after the derailment, a passenger in one of the stopped cars was fatally injured, two passengers in the same car received serious injuries, and five occupants of other cars waiting at the highway-rail crossing were injured. 
Two responding firefighters also sustained minor injuries. The release of ethanol and the resulting fire prompted a mandatory evacuation of about 600 residences within a 0.5 mile 0. 80 kilometers radius of the accident site. Monetary damages were estimated to total $7.9 million. The probable cause of the accident was the washout of the track structure that was discovered about one hour before the train's arrival, and CN's failure to notify the train crew of the known washout in time to stop the train because of the inadequacy of CN's emergency communication procedures. Contributing to the accident was the CN's failure to work with Winnebago County to develop a comprehensive storm water management plan to address the previous washouts in 2006 and 2007. Contributing to the severity of the accident was the CN's failure to issue the flash flood warning to the train crew and the inadequate design of the DOT 111 tank cars, which made the cars subject to damage and catastrophic loss of hazardous materials in the derailment. In October 2013 the James Street Bridge between Thunder Bay and Fort William First Nation was subject to an act of arson causing great structural damage to the bridge. The bridge was the most direct route between Thunder Bay and Fort William First Nation Reserve and was used by foot traffic, vehicular traffic, and rail traffic. The matter of who is responsible for the maintenance and repair of the bridge is subject to great controversy between the city of Thunder Bay and CN due to an agreement dating back to 1906 between the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway Company later incorporated as CNR along with other railways and the city of Fort William later merged with the city of Port Arthur into the city of Thunder Bay. The 1906 agreement states that the company will give the municipal corporation the perpetual right to cross said bridge for vehicle and foot traffic, and that the company will maintain the bridge in perpetuity without cost to the town. After the fire, CN made repairs to the bridge for use of its rail system but did not repair the damage to the vehicle lanes which render it unsafe for vehicle use. CN maintains that the 1906 agreement does not speak to replacement of the bridge while the position of the city of Thunder Bay is that CN is solely responsible for making the necessary repairs to restore function to the vehicle lanes of the bridge. In the years following CN's 1998 acquisition of Illinois Central, the company has come under scrutiny for illicit practices that allegedly cause the delay of Amtrak schedules. In 2012, Amtrak filed a formal complaint against CN with the Surface Transportation Board, stating that the prioritization of freight traffic over passenger traffic was commonplace on Amtrak routes operating on CN lines. The complaint cited over 4,000 delays during fiscal year 2011 on the route between Chicago and Carbondale, totaling over 26 days of net wasted schedule time. It also reported 99% of delays between Chicago and New Orleans on the City of New Orleans route were caused by CN dispatching issues. In 2018, Amtrak began issuing public report cards, grading the impact of freight railroads on passenger train performance. CN received the lowest possible grade of F on the first card issued in March 2018. Topic. Corporate governance Robert Pace is the chair of the CNR board. 
The other board members are Donald J. Carty, V. Maureen Kempston Darks, Gordon D. Giffen, Edith E. Holliday, Luke Jobin, Dennis Lozier, Kevin G. Lynch, James E. O'Connor, Robert L. Phillips, and Laura Stein. <laughs> Heads of CNR Thornton and Harrison are the only non-Canadians to head CN. Topic: Passenger trains. Topic: Early years. When CNR was first created, it inherited a large number of routes from its constituent railways, but eventually pieced its passenger network into one coherent network. For example, on December 3, 1920, CNR inaugurated the Continental Limited, which operated over four of its predecessors, as well as the Temiskaming and Northern Ontario Railway. The 1920s saw growth in passenger travel, and CNR inaugurated several new routes and introduced new services, such as radio, on its trains. However, the growth in passenger travel ended with the Great Depression, which lasted between 1929 and 1939, but picked up somewhat in World War II. By the end of World War II, many of CNR's passenger cars were old and worn down. Accidents at Dougald, Manitoba, in 1947 and Canoe River, British Columbia, in 1950, wherein extra passenger trains composed of older, wooden equipment collided with transcontinental passenger trains composed of newer, all-steel equipment, demonstrated the dangers inherent in the older cars. In 1953, CNR ordered 359 lightweight passenger cars, allowing them to re-equip their major routes. On April 24, 1955, the same day that the CPR introduced its transcontinental train the Canadian, CNR introduced its own new transcontinental passenger train, the Supercontinental, which used new streamlined rolling stock. However, the Supercontinental was never considered as glamorous as the Canadian. For example, it did not include dome cars. Dome cars would be added in the early 1960s with the purchase of six former Milwaukee Road Super Domes. They were used on the Super Continental in the summer tourist season. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> New services. Rail passenger traffic in Canada declined significantly between World War II and 1960 due to automobiles and airplanes. In the 1960s CN's privately owned rival CPR reduced its passenger services significantly. However, the government-owned CN continued much of its passenger services and marketed new schemes. One, introduced on 5 April 1962, was the red, white and blue fare structure, which offered deep discounts on off-peak days, red, and were credited with increasing passenger numbers on some routes as much as 600%. Another exercise was the rebranding of the express trains in the Ontario-Quebec corridor with the Rapido label. In 1968, CN introduced a new high-speed train, the United Aircraft Turbo, which was powered by gas turbines instead of diesel engines. It made the trip between Toronto and Montreal in four hours, but was not entirely successful because it was somewhat uneconomical and not always reliable. The trainsets were retired in 1982 and later scrapped at Metro C, in Laval, Quebec. 
On CN's narrow gauge lines in Newfoundland, CN also operated a main line passenger train that ran from St. John's to Port Ox Basques called the Caribou. Nicknamed the Newfie Bullet, this train ran until June 1969. It was replaced by the CN Roadcruiser buses. The CN Roadcruiser service was started in fall 1968 and was run in direct competition with the company's own passenger train. Travelers saw that the buses could travel between St. John's and Port Ox Basques in 14 hours versus the train's 22 hours. After the demise of the Caribou, the only passenger train service run by CN on the island were the mixed freight and passenger trains that ran on the Bonavista, Carbonier and Argentia branch lines. The only passenger service surviving on the main line was between Bishop's Falls and Corner Brook. In 1976, CN created an entity called Via CN as a separate operating unit for its passenger services. Via evolved into a coordinated marketing effort with CP Rail for rail passenger services, and later into a separate Crown Corporation responsible for intercity passenger services in Canada. Via Rail took over CN's passenger services on April 1, 1978. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Decline. CN continued to fund its commuter rail services in Montreal until 1982, when the Montreal Urban Community Transit Commission assumed financial responsibility for them. Operation was contracted out to CN, which eventually spun off a separate subsidiary, Montrain, for this purpose. When the Montreal de Montagnes line was completely rebuilt in 1994-1995, the new rolling stock came under the ownership of the MUCTC, until a separate government agency, the Agence Métropolitaine de Transport now RTM, was set up to consolidate all suburban transit administration around Montreal. Since then, suburban service has resumed to St. Hilaire, and a new line to Mascouche opened in December 2014. In Newfoundland, Terra Transport would continue to operate the mixed trains on the branch lines until 1984. The main line run between Corner Brook and Bishop's Falls made its last run on September 30, 1988. Terra Transport, CN would run the Roadcruiser bus service until March 29, 1996, whereupon the bus service was sold off to DRL Coachlines of Triton, Newfoundland. Topic expansion and service cuts From the acquisition of the Algoma Central Railway in 2001 until service cancellation in July 2015, CN operated passenger service between Sault Ste. Marie and Hearst, Ontario. The passenger service operated three days per week and provided year-round access to remote tourist camps and resorts. In January 2014, CN announced it was cutting the service, blaming the Canadian federal government for cutting a subsidy necessary to keep the service running. It was argued as an essential service, however, the service had always been deemed financially uneconomic, and despite an extension of funding in April 2014, Algoma Central Service was suspended as of July 2015. CN operates the Agawa Canyon Tour Excursion, an excursion that runs from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, north to the Agawa Canyon. The Canyon Tour train consists of up to 28 passenger cars and two dining cars, the majority of which were built for CN by Canadian Car and Foundry in 1953-54. These cars were transferred to the D&R GW ski train and bought back by CN in 2009. 
After CN acquired BC Rail in 2004, it started operating a railbus service between Seaton Portage and Lillooet, British Columbia called the Cowham Shuttle. CN crews used to operate commuter trains on behalf of GO Transit in the Toronto and the surrounding vicinity. This changed in 2008 when a deal was reached with Bombardier Transportation that switched all CN crews for Bombardier crews. Topic: <laughs> Locomotives. Topic: <laughs> Steam. The CNR acquired its first four, eight, four Confederation locomotives in 1927. Over the next 20 years, it ordered over 200 for passenger and heavy freight service. The CNR also used several four, eight, two mountain locomotives, almost exclusively for passenger service. Number 6060, a streamlined 482, was the last CN steam locomotive, running in excursion service in the 1970s. CNR also used several 282 Mikado locomotives. <laughs> <laughs> Electric CN inherited from the Canadian Northern Railway several box gap electrics used through the Mount Royal Tunnel. Those were built between 1914 and 1918 by General Electric in Schenectady, New York. To operate the new Montreal Central Station, which opened in 1943 and was to be kept free of locomotive smoke, they were supplemented by nearly identical locomotives from the National Harbors Board. Those engines were built in 1924 by Bayer Garrett and English Electric. In 1950, three General Electric center cab electric locomotives were added to the fleet. In 1952 CN added electric multiple units built by Canadian Car and Foundry. Electrification was restricted to Montreal, and went from Central Station to St. Lambert South, Turcotte West, Montreal Nord East, and St. Eustache sur le Lac, later renamed Der Montagnes, North. But as steam locomotives gave way to diesels, engine changeovers were no longer necessary, and catenary was eventually pulled from the west, east and from the south. However, until the end of the original electrification, CN's electric locomotives pulled via rails trains, including its diesel electric locomotives, to and from Central Station. The last 2,400 volts DCCN electric locomotive ran on June 6, 1995, the very same locomotive that pulled the inaugural train through the Mount Royal Tunnel back in 1918. Later in 1995 the AMT's electric multiple units began operating under 25 kV AC 60 Hz electrification, and in 2014, dual-power locomotives entered service on the Mascouche line. Topic Turbo In May 1966 Canadian National Railways ordered 5-7-car UAC turbotrain for the Montreal-Toronto service. It planned to operate them in tandem, connecting two trains together into a larger 14-car arrangement with a total capacity of 644 passengers. The Canadian trains were built by Montreal Locomotive Works, with their ST6 engines supplied by UAC's Canadian division now Pratt & Whitney Canada in Lingale, Quebec. CN and their ad agency wanted to promote the new service as an entirely new form of transit, so they dropped the «train» from the name. 
In CN's marketing literature the train was referred to simply as the «Turbo», although it retained the full Turbotrain name in CN's own documentation and communication with UAC. A goal of CN's marketing campaign was to get the train into service for Expo 67, and the Turbo was rushed through its trials. It was late for Expo, a disappointment to all involved, but the hectic pace did not let up and it was cleared for service after only one year of testing. The Turbo's first demonstration run in December 1968 with conductor James Abbey of Toronto in command, included a large press contingent. An hour into its debut run, the Turbo collided with a truck at a highway crossing near Kingston. The Turbo's final run was on October 31, 1982. Topic diesel CNR's first foray into diesel motive power was with self-propelled railcars. In November 1925, railcar number 15820 completed a 72-hour journey from Montreal to Vancouver with the 185 horsepower, 138 kilowatts diesel engine in nearly continuous operation for the entire 4726 kilometers, 2937 miles trip. Railcars were used on marginal economic routes instead of the more expensive to operate steam locomotives used for busier routes. In 1929, the CNR made its first experiment with mainline diesel electric locomotives, acquiring two 1330 horsepower, 990 kilowatts engines from Westinghouse, numbered 9000 and 9001. It was the first North American railway to use diesels in mainline service. These early units proved the feasibility of the diesel concept, but were not always reliable. Number 9000 served until 1939, and number 9001 until 1947. The difficulties of the Great Depression precluded much further progress towards diesel locomotives. The CNR began its conversion to diesel locomotives after World War II, and had fully dieselized by 1960. Most of the CNR's first-generation diesel locomotives were made by General Motors Diesel GMD and Montreal Locomotive Works. For its narrow gauge lines in Newfoundland CN acquired from GMD the 900 series, models NF110 road numbers 900-908 and NF210 road numbers 909-946. For use on the branch lines, CN purchased the EMD G8 road numbers 800-805. For passenger service the CNR acquired GMDFP-9 diesels, as well as CLC CPA-16-5, Alco MLW FPA-2 and FPA-4 diesels. These locomotives made up most of the CNR's passenger fleet, although CN also owned some 60 railiners Bud Rail diesel cars, some dual-purpose diesel freight locomotives freight locomotives equipped with passenger train apparatus, such as steam generators as well as the locomotives for the turbo train sets. VIA acquired most of CN's passenger fleet when it took over CN passenger service in 1978. The CN fleet as of 2007 consists of 1548 locomotives, most of which are products of either General Motors Electro-Motive Division EMD, or General Electric, GE Transportation Systems. Some locomotives more than 30 years old remain in service. Much of the current roster is made up of EMDSD 70i and EMDSD 75i locomotives and GEC 449W locomotives. 
Recently acquired are the new EMD SD70M2 and GEES 44DC. Since 2015, the GEES 44AC and GEET 44AC are the latest units. Beginning in the early summer months of 2010, CN purchased a small order of GEC 40-8ZA and GEC 40-8Ws from Union Pacific and BNSF Railway, respectively. The intent was to use them as a cheaper power alternative. CN currently have 65 GEES 44 ACs on its roster and all 65 were ordered and delivered from December 2012 to December 2013. They are CN's first AC-powered locomotives. In 2015, CN started ordering more GE units, the ET44 AC. Comfort cab CN locomotives have long featured unique features, unlike the stock EMD and GE locomotives. CN introduced a wide-nosed four-window comfort cab, the predecessor to the now-standard North American safety cab, which is now standard on new North American freight locomotives. Ditch lights After a BC derailment, CN introduced ditch lights, lights mounted on or just below the anti-climbers on the front pilot of a locomotive. These are used to make trains more visible at grade crossings, and to give better visibility around curves. Since then, ditch lights have become standard features on all North American locomotives. Class and marker lights CN continued to use class lights on its locomotives for many years, up to as recently as the C-48M and SD-60F which feature red, green and white class lights, and the first order C-449WL locomotives which retained white class lights. More recently, CN has had red marker lights installed on their ES44DC and SD70M2 locomotives, for use when the locomotives are in DPU service. The latest orders of the GEs all have the red marker lights on both ends of the locomotive. Windshield CN's first few orders of ES44 DCs, like their C44-9Ws, feature teardrop windshields, windshields with the outer lower corner dropped like earlier SD70s as opposed to the standard rectangular GE windshield, for better range of vision. CN's latest GE units now have the standard rectangular windshields. Headlights The first order of SD70M2 locomotives 8000 series had their headlights mounted on the cab, while the second order 8800 and 8900 series dropped the headlight to the nose, and also features added red marker lights mounted above the windshields on the cab. Control stands while many railroads have ordered new desktop controls, where the controls are arranged on a desk. CN returned earlier than most to the conventional control stand that most locomotive engineers prefer, which features a stand to the side of the engineer with controls that stick out horizontally. This arrangement makes reverse operation easier, and allows engineers to put their feet up, without feeling stuck at a desk all day. Car body CN's General Motors retired SD50F, retired SD60F, retired Bombardier HR616s, and General Electric C48M feature a full-width car body that is tapered directly behind the cab, to allow for better rear visibility. This is referred to as a Draper Taper after its creator. The first order of the GEC 449WL was also initially an order for 18 locomotives with the full-width Draper Taper car body. 
They were changed to a standard long hood with a CN style four window cab, and the order was increased to 23 locomotives at the same price. Topic: <laughs> Freight cars. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Overseas intermodal containers. 20 foot 6 1 meter containers 40 foot 12 meters containers 45 foot 14 meters containers topic north american intermodal containers 48 foot 15 meters containers 48 foot 15 meters heater reefer containers 50 foot 15 meters reefer heater containers modified 48 53 foot 16 meters containers 53 foot 16 meters heater reefer containers topic container chassis Max Atlas 40 to 53 foot 12 to 16 meters extendable container chassis Demond 40 to 53 foot 12 to 16 meters extendable container chassis Topic <laughs> Aqua Train CN operates a rail barge service between Prince Rupert, British Columbia to Whittier, Alaska since 1963. The barge has eight tracks that can hold about 50 railcars. The barge is towed by tugs contracted to Foss Maritime. <laughs> Major facilities CN owns a large number of large yards and repair shops across their system, which are used for many operations ranging from intermodal terminals to classification yards. Below are some examples of these. Topic. Active hump yards Hump yards work by using a small hill, over which cars are pushed before being released down a slope and switched automatically into cuts of cars, ready to join into outbound trains. CN's active humps include Vaughan, Ontario, Macmillan Yard Winnipeg, Manitoba, Symington Yard Gary, Indiana, Kirk Yard Memphis, Tennessee, Harrison Yard Flat Rock, Michigan, Flat Rock Yard Topic. See also CN Police Narrow Gauge Railways in Canada Canadian Pacific Railway CN Tower Go Transit Largest domestic 53-foot container companies fleet size List of Canadian National Railways companies Newfoundland Trailway Ontario Northland Railway Via Rail Topic. Former component railways Canadian Government Railways Intercolonial Railway Prince Edward Island Railway National Transcontinental Railway Canadian Northern Railway Duluth, Winnipeg and Pacific Railway Canadian Northern Pacific Railway Grand Trunk Railway Central Vermont Railway 
St. Lawrence and Atlantic Railroad Grand Trunk Western Railroad Detroit, Toledo and Ironton Railroad Grand Trunk Pacific Railway London and Port Stanley Railway Newfoundland Railway Illinois Central Railroad Wisconsin Central Limited Algoma Central Railway Elgin, Joliet and Eastern Railway Green Bay and Western Railroad Great Lakes Transportation Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad Duluth, Missabe and Iron Range Railway Northern Alberta Railways Edmonton, Dunvegan and British Columbia Railway Alberta and Great Waterways Railway Central Canada Railway Pembina Valley Railway Topic. Under long-term lease BC Rail Topic. Former subsidiaries CN Marine, Marine Atlantic Terra Transport Trans Canada Air Lines, Air Canada Via Rail Canadian National Hotels Topic Joint Partnerships Toronto Terminal Railways Management Team for Toronto's Union Station with Canadian Pacific Railway <laughs> <laughs>